Let's see how all of these new features come together and play out in the day of a life of a team handling an incident. Mary McKenna is a junior software engineer at Dean Sporting Goods, a business-to-consumer retail company that sells sporting equipment. She's on call for the inventory team, which is responsible for the inventory services. The inventory services display available items customers can order on the retail website. And Mary's organization has a service ownership model where her team is responsible for running their code in production, which means she is on call one week per month for any production issues that may come up on the inventory services. Prior to adopting PagerDuty, her experience on call was difficult. Here's what a typical shift was like, according to Mary. I'd be woken up by alerts, interrupted while eating dinner, and carried my laptop everywhere. Some of these alerts weren't even relevant for my team. Others required me to jump on a conference call with a hundred other people. We'd spend hours getting nowhere. Meanwhile, customers were getting upset and our support teams were overwhelmed and asking us when everything would be fixed. It was very frustrating for everyone. But on-call is different now with PagerDuty. Here's what an incident last week looked like for my team. Mary is taking her dog for a walk after work when she receives an alert. The inventory API is experiencing an issue. Mary knows that issues with this service could possibly affect a much larger customer-facing service. In this case, the product pages would fail to load. The alert triggers notifications to the on-call responders in line with their personal notification settings. PagerDuty can use phone calls, text messages, emails, and push notifications to the PagerDuty mobile app to engage responders. Not wanting to waste any time, Mary opens this incident in the PagerDuty mobile app and begins her review. From here, Mary can see immediately that the incident has been flagged as a P2. And as she scrolls further, she can see the impacted service and view the incident timeline. After reviewing this information, she'll acknowledge the incident to stop it from notifying her anymore or escalating to the next on-call responder. She clicks back over to the triage tab to review more information about this incident. As she scrolls further, here Mary can also see that a recent change event has occurred, a potential culprit for this incident. Additionally, she sees information about past incidents, and she can also see related information like triggered alerts and how they've been grouped together to reduce noise and help her focus on this issue. If she reviews the details of one of these past incidents, she will see that it was caused by a similar change. Mary is also able to see how the team was able to resolve it. Past incidents, change events, and alert grouping are all part of PagerDuty's event intelligence offering, which provides Mary's team the signals and context they need to take action, resolve faster, and reduce downtime. Knowing that the past incident also affected the website's ability to load product pages, Mary is concerned that the current incident is causing the same problem. Mary wants a teammate to help her out. She taps Add Responder Action on the carousel and sends a request to her secondary on-call, Melinda, to join this incident. The new carousel on the mobile app quickly allows Mary to take a variety of common actions such as setting or changing the priority, escalating or reassigning an incident, adding a note, or posting a status update for stakeholders. Now since Dean's Sporting Goods Observability Provider flagged this incident as a P2, it really shouldn't wait for Mary to get home to address it. So she chooses to add a note so Melinda can get to work while Mary hurries back home. Melinda receives an alert while working at her laptop. She quickly opens the incident in PagerDuty that she's been added to. She also looks at Mary's note and other diagnostic information added automatically by Rundeck. This incident seems high priority to her as well, but she'll need to confirm. Further down the page in the Technical Service Dependencies pane, she will click View Service Graph to view all of her technical and business services in a single place. She can see that her incident is affecting the larger business service, the customer-facing website. The next step is to see if Melinda can auto-resolve this incident. For this, she uses Rundeck Actions. Rundeck Actions allows responders to choose from a list of automated diagnostics and repair functions to determine root cause and potentially resolve issues. Melinda will deploy a runbook with the Rundeck Actions to do a rolling restart of the API services containers. If it's successful, the incident might resolve itself. If it's not, the team will know that the next step is indeed to roll back the change. Two minutes later, Melinda checks the notes and sees that the API did reconnect properly. Next, she will rerun the diagnostics to get a real-time status of the API nodes. After that, she will notice that the change is still affecting the service. The incident is not completely resolved. They will need to roll back this recent change. With this information, Melinda feels confident that this incident qualifies as a P1. She'll return to the incident and change the priority. And then she'll add a note to Mary explaining what she did and what she's discovered. Mary is now back online at her laptop. 
and sees that the incident has officially been declared a P1. Now, there are a few things that she must do according to team policy. First, she'll need more responders than just Melinda. Second, they'll need a conference bridge to communicate. And finally, they'll need to add the website business service owners and customer support team as stakeholders to receive status updates. Now, rather than doing all these things individually, Mary clicks Run a Play and searches for Inventory API P1. Running plays within PagerDuty allows responders to predetermine a set of actions that should be executed within an incident and automatically complete them as a group with a single click. Mary runs this play. PagerDuty completes the required actions. Mary has requested a larger response team. There's a conference bridge for everyone to join, and critical stakeholders have now been added to the incident. And finally, an initial status update has been published. Since Mary has looped in more stakeholders, she needs to update the incident status. This helps the stakeholders understand what's going on without interrupting the incident response process. To do this, she will click the New Update button. She adds her text and presses Send. Mary's team doesn't require rich text updates, but other teams at Dean's Sporting Goods do. In those cases, the teams can craft a rich text email to send to stakeholders that is formatted in a way that those stakeholders can easily understand. The status updates are visible for all stakeholders on the incident status dashboard. Now it's time to hop on the bridge with her team. Mary's team has a policy that the responders stay on the bridge for the entire duration of a P1 incident. However, for many incidents that are not a P1, Mary's team usually communicates over Slack. With PagerDuty's chat ops features, the team is able to leverage their communication tool of choice to automate toil from the process and keep in contact with one another until they resolve the incident. Now, while all of this has been going on, the support team is also looking into the incident. The on-call team member, Chris Bell, was added as a stakeholder early in the process, so he has an indication of what's happening. In tandem, he sees that customer complaints are coming in through Salesforce. Based on the complaints, Chris is confident that they are related to this current P1 incident, so he begins linking relevant cases to the ongoing incident displayed in the PageDuty dashboard. This helps the response team understand how big the customer impact really is. Additionally, Chris can craft communications to the affected customers. He can send out those communications as soon as he sees the incident is resolved, and this helps build customer trust and transparency. After some time, the team is able to roll back the change and confirm that the website is displaying product pages properly again. Mary posts a status update to share that the incident is resolved. And this will be reflected on the status dashboard. This will also be reflected in Dean's ITSM tool. So this means that everyone, from executives to help desk, knows that the incident has concluded. It also updates the customer support dashboard in Salesforce, letting Chris know that he can send out his communications. In all, this incident had a duration of 16 minutes from detection to full resolution.